Section 31 of the Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. Section 31. Defects of the Universities. From the Advancement of Learning by Francis Bacon Amongst so many great foundations of colleges in Europe, I find it strange that they are all dedicated to professions, and none left free to arts and sciences at large. For if men judge that learning should be referred to action, they judge well. But in this they fall into the air described in the ancient fable, in which the other parts of the body did suppose the stomach had become idle, because it neither performed the office of motion, as the limbs do, nor of sense, as the head doth. But yet, notwithstanding, it is the stomach that digesteth and distributeth to all the rest. So if any man think philosophy and universality to be idle studies, he doth not consider that all professions are from thence served and supplied and this I take to be a great cause that hath hindered the progression of learning, because these fundamental knowledges have been studied but in passage. For if you will have a tree bear more fruit than it hath used to do, it is not anything you can do to the boughs, but it is the stirring of the earth and putting new mould about the roots that must work it. Neither is it to be forgotten that this dedicating of foundations and dotations to professory learning hath not only had a malign aspect and influence upon the growth of sciences, but hath also been prejudicial to states and governments. For hence it proceedeth that princes find a solitude in regard of able men to serve them in causes of a state, because there is no education collegiate which is free, where such as were so disposed might give themselves to histories, modern languages, books of policy and civil discourse, and other the like enablements unto service of a state. And because founders of colleges do plant, and founders of lecturers do water, it followeth well in order to speak of the defect which is in public lectures, namely, in the smallness and meanness of the salary or reward which in most places is assigned unto them, whether they be lectures of arts or of professions, for it is necessary to the progression of sciences that readers be of the most able and sufficient men, as those which are ordained for generating and propagating of sciences, and not for transitory use. This cannot be, except their condition and endowment be such as may content the ablest man to appropriate his whole labor, and continue his whole age, in that function and attendance, and therefore must have a proportion answerable to that mediocrity or competency of advancement, which may be expected from a profession, or the practice of a profession. So as, if you will have sciences flourish, you must observe David's military law, which was, that those which stayed with a carriage should have equal part with those which were in action, else will the carriages be ill attended. So readers in sciences are indeed the guardians of the stores and provisions of sciences, which men in active courses are furnished, and therefore ought to have equal entertainment with them, otherwise if the fathers in sciences be of the weakest sort, or be ill-maintained. Et patrum invalidi referent jejunia nati. Weakness of parents will show in feebleness of offspring. Another defect I note, wherein I shall need some alchemist to help me, who call upon men to sell their books and to build furnaces, quitting and forsaking Minerva and the Muses as barren virgins, and relying upon Vulcan. But certain it is, that unto the deep, fruitful, and operative study of many sciences, especially natural philosophy and physic, books be not only the instrumentals, wherein also the beneficence of men hath not been altogether wanting. For we see spheres, globes, astrolabes, maps, and the like, have been provided as appurtenances to astronomy and cosmology, as well as books. We see likewise that some places instituted for physic have annexed the commodity of gardens for simples of all sorts, 
and do likewise command the use of dead bodies for anatomies. But these do respect but a few things. In general there will hardly be any main proficience in the disclosing of nature, except there be some allowance for expenses about experiments, whether they be experiments appertaining to Vulcanus or Daedalus, furnace or engine, or any other kind. And therefore, as secretaries and spiles of princes and states bring in bills for intelligence, so you must allow the spiles and intelligencers of nature to bring in their bills, or else you shall be ill-advertised. And if Alexander makes such a liberal assignation to Aristotle of treasure for the allowance of hunters, fowlers, fishers, and the like, that he might compile a history of nature, much better do they deserve it that travail in arts of nature. Another defect which I note is an intermission or neglect in those which are governors in universities of consultation, and in princes or superior persons of visitation, to enter into account and consideration whether the readings, exercises, and other customs appertaining unto learning, anciently begun and since continued, be well instituted or no, and thereupon to ground an amendment or reformation in that which shall be found inconvenient. For it is one of your majesty's own most wise and princely maxims, that in all usages and precedents the times be considered wherein they first began, which if they were weak or ignorant, it derogateth from the authority of the usage, and leaveth it for suspect. And therefore inasmuch as most of the usages and orders of the university were derived from more obscure times, it is the more requisite they be re-examined. In this kind I will give an instance or two, for example's sake, of the things that are the most obvious and familiar. The one is a matter which, though it be ancient and general, yet I hold to be an error, which is, that scholars in universities come too soon and too unripe to logic and rhetoric, arts fitter for graduates than children and novices. For these two, rightly taken, are the gravest of sciences, being the arts of arts, the one for judgment, the other for ornament. And they be the rules and directions how to set forth and dispose matter, and therefore for minds empty and unfraught with matter, and which have not gathered that which Cicero calleth silva and supplex, stuff and variety, to begin with those arts, if one should learn to weigh, or to measure, or to paint the wind, doth work but this effect, that the wisdom of those arts, which is great and universal, is almost made contemptible, and is degenerate into childish sophistry and ridiculous affectation. And further, the untimely learning of them hath drawn on by consequence the superficial and unprofitable teaching and writing of them, as fitteth indeed to the capacity of children. Another is the lack I find in the exercises used in the universities, which do make too great a divorce between invention and memory. For their speeches are either premeditate, in verbis conceptus, where nothing is left to invention, or merely extemporal, where little is left to memory, whereas in life and action there is least use of either of these, but rather of intermixtures of premeditation and invention, notes and memory. So as the exercise fitteth not the practice, nor the image the life, and it is ever a true rule in exercises that they be framed as near as may be to the life of practice, for otherwise they do pervert the motions and faculties of the mind, and not prepare them. The truth whereof is not obscure, when scholars come to the practices of professions, or other activities of civil life, which when they set into, this want is soon found by themselves, and sooner by others. But this part, touching the amendment of the institutions and order of universities, I will conclude with the clause of Caesar's letter to Opius and Balbus. Hoc quum ad modum fieri posset non nulla mihi in mentum veniut, et multa reperiri possant de ius rebus rogo vos, ut cogitationem susipietis. How this may be done, some ways come to my mind, and many may be devised. I ask you to take these things into consideration. Another defect which I note ascendeth a little higher than the precedent. For as the proficience of learning consisteth much in the orders and institutions of universities, in the same states and kingdoms, 
so it would be yet more advanced if there were more intelligence mutual between the universities of Europe than now there is. We see there be many orders and foundations, which though they be divided under several sovereignties and territories, yet they take themselves to have a kind of contract, fraternity, and correspondence one with the other, insomuch as they have provincials and generals. And surely as nature createth brotherhood in families, and arts mechanical contract brotherhoods and communalities, and the appointment of God superinduceth a brotherhood in kings and bishops, so in like manner there cannot but be a fraternity in learning and illumination, relating to that paternity which is attributed to God, who is called the Father of illuminations, or lights. The last defect which I will note is, that there hath not been, or very rarely been, any public designation of writers or inquirers concerning such parts of knowledge as may appear not to have been already sufficiently laboured or undertaken, unto which point it is an inducement to enter into a view and examination what parts of learning have been prosecuted and which omitted. For the opinion of plenty is amongst the causes of want, and the great quantity of books maketh a show rather of superfluity than lack, which surcharge nevertheless is not to be remedied by making no more books, but by making more good books, which, as the serpent of Moses, might devour the serpents of the enchanters. The removing of all the defects formerly enumerated, except the last, and of the active part also of the last, which is the designation of writers, are opera basilica, king's works, towards which the endeavours of a private man may be but as an image in a crossway, that may point at the way, but cannot go it. But the inducing part of the latter, which is the survey of learning, may be set forward by private travail. Wherefore I will now attempt to make a general and faithful perambulation of learning, with an inquiry what parts thereof lie fresh and waste, and not improved and converted by the industry of man, to the end that such a plot made and recorded to memory may both minister light to any public designation, and also serve to excite voluntary endeavours. Wherein nevertheless my purpose is at this time to note only omissions and deficiencies, and not make any redargution of errors or incomplete prosecutions. For it is one thing to set forth what ground lieth unmanured, and another thing to correct ill husbandry in that which is manured. In the handling and undertaking of which work, I am not ignorant what it is that I do now move and attempt, nor insensible of mine own weakness to sustain my purpose. But my hope is, that if my extreme love of learning carry me too far, I may obtain the excuse of affection, for it is not granted to men to love and to be wise. But I know well that I can use no other liberty of judgment than I must leave to others, and I, for my part, shall be indifferently glad either to perform myself or accept from another that duty of humanity, nam qui errante comitur monstrat fiam, etc., to kindly show the wanderer the path. I do foresee likewise that of those things which I shall enter and register as deficiencies and omissions, many will conceive and censure that some of them are already done and extant, others to be but curiosities and things of no great use, and others to be of too great difficulty and almost impossibility to be compassed and effected. But for the two first, I refer myself to the particulars. For the last, touching impossibility, I take it those things are to be held possible which may be done by some person, though not by every one, and which may be done by many, though not by any one, and which may be done in the succession of ages, though not within the hour-glass of one man's life and which may be done by public designation, though not by private endeavour. But notwithstanding, if any man will take to himself rather that of Solomon, docet piger, leo est in via, the sluggard says, there is a lion in the path, than that of Virgil, possunt quia posse videntur, they can because they think they can, I shall be content that my labours be esteemed, but as the better sort of wishes, for it asketh some knowledge to demand a question not impertinent, so it requireth some sense to make a wish not absurd. End of section 31